things straight for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the caption was, you cannot outrun it. It's an event of such magnitude that the world will never be the same once this takes place. And we're talking about the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. And there are clear scriptures that help us to understand the manner of His coming and the things that precede His coming, the things that will happen before. So that when you see the signs, the Bible says, mm -hmm. Jesus says in Matthew 24 and in other places, know that the, it is near, even at hand. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we would like to encourage you to pay close attention to the things that will be discussed in this program because it could mean your salvation. As, as is the case when it comes to the seasons, you know, out, any, anybody in any part of the world, they have to live by the seasons. And we know that when it starts getting darker earlier, mm -hmm. the winter is coming. Winter is coming. When it starts staying lighter later and later, the summer is on its way. When the flowers begin to bud, the spring is, has come and the summer is on its way. When the flowers begin to die and the leaves begin to fall, the fall or autumn is on its way. Mm -hmm. And the winter is just not too far away. And uh, so also the Bible gives us signs. Matter of fact, why don't we go to Matthew 24? I think it's a good place to lay the foundation. We've talked about a number of things and this lesson is a lesson that would do you well if you just open the Bibles your Bible to study what the Bible says about the second coming of Jesus. It talks about the parable of the fig tree. Uh, Matthew 24, John, would you read verse 32 to 35? Matthew 24, verse 32 to 35. Just clear indications. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And then in the very next passage, the Bible uses the days of Noah as an example. Mm -hmm. Noah had been preaching. 120 years had passed. Uh, there was a time limit God had given from the preaching of the gospel of the first world being destroyed to the, to the time that it occurred, 120 years. Uh, Noah's sons were born, uh, mm -hmm. they got older, uh, Noah got older, and uh, all these things continued to happen as it was until just before the, the destruction of the world and all those events took place mm -hmm. that had not happened before. And there are a lot of people today, Johnny, that say, well, I mean, okay, outside of war and, and people getting older and more modern technology, they tend to look at all these things as disconnected. When in fact, if you put the whole picture together, you see clearly the Bible talks about all these things as having some great relevance to the hour in which we live. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when Jesus comes back, um, who will come with Jesus at his second coming? You know, John, I think it's uh, when you mentioned Noah, uh, he preached for 120 years, is what we understand. Right. Uh, now, uh, provision had been made for the salvation from destruction at that time that was coming. And it's a sad, sad story that only a handful of, of the thousands and thousands of people that were alive at that time that only a handful were able to take advantage of the provision that was made for salvation mm -hmm. from the destruction that came. And so uh, even in, in the time before Christ, provision has been made for your salvation. Provision has been made. Christ has died on the cross in order to make it possible, your, your salvation. And it is a choice that we have to be saved or not to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no, no one that can be uh, excluded. They say, well, I, I didn't have a, any choice in this matter. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a choice for salvation. And I hope uh, the, 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 everyone listening and watching this program will choose salvation. A lot of times people wonder how long it was from the time Adam was created to the time the flood came. Now, there are two people that we could use as a timeline. We think of Methuselah mm -hmm. because the year that he died, the flood came, and we think of the age of Adam. Adam lived to be 930 years and Methuselah 969. Now, if they were contemporaries of each other for a short period of time, we could say 900 and 900 is 1800. 
that if one, that's if one died before the other one even started living. But if they overlapped, we could say, well, we're talking about at least 1,500 years of people living on Earth. Mm -hmm. And if you think how many people can be born in 1,500 years, well, let's just not run past that too quickly. 1,500 years is a long time. It's a long time. Let's think about that. Um, this is what, 2000, 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's think 1,500 years earlier was what? If it was 1,000 years ago, it was 1,007. Yes. Okay, so we could go back to 507. Mm -hmm. 507. So that's a long, that's so a long from time. 507 mm -hmm. AD to 2007, do you think a million people could be born? Oh, very easily. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See? And in those days, they were a lot healthier than we are. Yes. They lived a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And imagine a man living 700 years, how many children can he have? Yes. As compared to a guy 60. Mm -hmm. So there were quite a few people on the earth in those days. Even when you just read uh, the amount of children Abraham had, I mean Adam had, uh, I mean he, it says he had sons and daughters. Uh, and it's, it's really, uh, we don't know the amount of people, but we know there were, uh, perhaps there were a, a few million, a few million right. people. So by the time the flood came, the world was quite, quite a large thing. But uh, we're going to talk about some of the questions leading up. And we talked about the positive fact that Jesus is coming again. Uh, he's going to come according to the promise he made. When he comes, every eye is going to see him. But the next question is, who will come when Jesus returns? Go with us to Matthew 25 and verse 31. Matthew 25 and verse 31. Uh, because he did say he was going to come again. And this is an answer, by the way, to Acts uh, chapter 1. But just start with verse 31 for us. Who will come with Jesus at his second coming and why? Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And verse 32. 32. And before him shall he gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to add verse 33 and 34 too. <laughs> and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So when Jesus comes back, he's coming back with the holy angels, but you don't want to miss what was just read. Because, Johnny, some people have heard that passage so much that they add to it what wasn't there and they miss what is there. Mm -hmm. Now, what is there is he's going to come back with his angels. He's not coming back with saints. Mm -hmm. You see? That's right. At the, at the second coming of Christ that we're waiting for, he's coming back with the angels. That's he's right. not bringing people back. That's right. Very okay? clear. Mm -hmm. That's very important. But who is he coming for? He's coming for people. That's right. He's going to gather his elect from all the nations. Very important point. There are a lot of people that think that, and I'm, I know this is going to generate a question, and that's what our program is all about. There are some people that think that when you die, you go right to heaven, and when Jesus comes back, he's bringing back people with him. Somebody even used the book of First Thessalonians when it says, even so those who sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You see? And so there are people that think that, hey, since you die and go to heaven, well, when Jesus comes back, he's going to bring them back, then he's going to take them back, then he's going to bring them back. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that when Jesus comes, he's coming with all his holy angels. He's coming in the same way, the reverse of how he did when he left. So in order to, in order to understand how he's coming back, you've got to understand clearly how he left. And, uh, Johnny, you're looking something up there, but let's go to Acts chapter 1, unless you have a passage you want us to read. Well, yes, you know, you were talking about that he's not coming with the... Um, with, with people. With people. Uh, in Revelation, um, not Revelation, John chapter <laughs> okay. 5. All right, let's go to John. John chapter 5, we have a habit of going to the book of Revelation. In John chapter 5, Jesus talks about two resurrections uh, in verse 29. Yeah, yeah. John yes. chapter 5, verse 29. It says, uh, I'll read verse 28 for context. Yeah. Uh, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, into which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And they shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection.